Like most of the people in Napoleon's gang of losers, I'm 18, the age where no one takes care of you, so most of my showers are taken at the Y. I'm not homeless per se, I just can't stop for very long. I'm too wired. And I have this idea that you could belong everywhere rather than just one place, so I don't call anything home. Don't know what I'd do there if I did. I just get antsy and want to leave again. People who suffer because they have nowhere in particular to go are those who can sit still, who sleep. I stopped doing these things last September when I made a mistake and moved into the wrong place, a bad apartment christened the doghouse by someone who painted that on the door. The doghouse was the last place I played music on purpose of my own volition. I innocently stepped through the door of the doghouse and put my stuff down because I thought that if I lived alone for a while, music might speak to me, tell me its secrets. Music spoke all right. It yelled. And as it turns out, it has no secrets. If you ask music a question, it answers, and then just keeps talking louder and louder, never shuts up. Music yelled so loud and so much in the doghouse, I can still hear it. I was used to sound tapping me on the shoulder and singing into my ear. I've heard music that no one else hears since I got hit by a car a couple years ago and sustained a double concussion. I didn't know what to make of this at first, but eventually I came to feel lucky, special, as if I'd tapped into an intelligence. Songs played of their own accord, making themselves up. I listened and copied them down. Last fall, though, the music I heard began to feed off the doghouse's evil energy. Songs no longer tapped me on the shoulder. They slugged me in the jaw. Instead of singing to me, they screamed, burrowing into my brain as electricity. I got zapped so bad in that apartment, I don't think I'll ever rest again. In the doghouse, sleep stopped coming, days stopped ending. Now sleep doesn't come and days don't end. Sleeping pills slow my thinking, but they can't shut down my red-hot brain. If I do manage to drop off, wild dreams wake me up, so I'm different now. My thinking is liquid and quick. I can function at all hours. My songs are different, too. And when I play them, I become them. Evil. Charged. I am actually head over heels in love with these evil songs in spite of myself. It's hard not to be. They're arresting. Before I disappeared into the doghouse, the songs I heard were not devils. They were floaty angels. Gentle and meandering. Interesting if you took the time to pay attention, but they wouldn't necessarily stop you in your tracks. Now the songs I bring to my band are essential, bursting, harsh black and white sketches that my bandmates color in with their own personal noise. These songs grab your face and shout at it. Do you want your face grabbed and shouted at? Probably not. At the very least, it's irritating. But now that it's happened to me, I know that music is as close to religion as I'll ever get. It's a spiritually and biologically sound endeavor. It's healthy. Some music is healthy anyway. I know a lot of bands who are candy or beer, fun and bad for you in a way that makes you feel good for a minute. My band is spinach, I guess. We're ragged and bitter. And nobody really likes us very much, but I swear to God, we're good for you. Rubbing elbows with the unemployed and you You are so beautiful You are so rude Peeping mangoes on a fold-out couch I'm screwed out You're inscrutable You're all 
was beautiful It was you I'm giving up the ugly I thought you'd make pretty I'll make a Tired. Mm -hmm. I'm so tired. 